Floss Tube. My name is Becca and I am Sam Bree Stitches here on YouTube and other social media platforms. Welcome to another special edition of Interview with a Floss Tuber. This one's a little bit a long time in the making. We've had to postpone it a couple of times, so I'm pretty excited to be here with Melissa. Um, her Floss Tube channel is called Stitch with Mel. Um, what I really like about her channel is she is very uplifting, positive, and supportive um, throughout her whole video and her Instagram and Facebook. If you ever need a smile or like a cheering up or, or anything like that, she is the person to go to on her social media platforms. Um, it's just, it's always uplifting. She always makes me smile. Um, she's very caring. Um, on top of all of the kindness and the support that she shows, she does show beautiful stitching as well. Um, and she gives us a glimpse into her personal life, um, which is something that I also do. And I like when uh, fellow floss tubers also kind of share their lives with us. It get, makes me feel like we're all a little bit closer that way. So um, if you're not familiar with Melissa's channel and Instagram and all that, it will be posted below. So definitely go give her a follow because she is definitely worth watching. So very excited that we get to talk yes too i'm so happy we like i said we postponed this a couple of times because of just you know crazy things happening so um, yeah but before we jump into the questions i was just wondering if you wanted to tell us a little bit about yourself hi floss two my name is melissa lore i am 41 years old i am a mom of three grown-ups oh my gosh did i just say that I don't they're know. 19 21 and 23. that's crazy um i i yeah i'm still like 20 at heart so just ask my baby Me too. She, she knows. <laughs> um little bit about myself um i am probably unexpected because I'm naturally actually a shy person. This is all like forced extrovertism, something. But um, no, really, I love people, and I just um, I wanted to be uplifting with all of this, and so that's kind of been my goal from the get go. So, um, Boss Tip came into my life at a time when life had fallen apart, and so I just want to give back to what everybody's giving to me. That definitely comes through. Like I, like I said in the introduction, it does come through. So um, yeah, the, our community is amazing. Uh, when somebody's down, like, you know, I've been sick and, and everybody's been so supportive. You've gone through some life changes and and the community is just beyond supportive. I think uh, we're very blessed, <laughs> very blessed. So um, we're gonna jump into the questions. The first one is, why did you start a floss tube and were there any particular motivations? Can, Can I tell my backstory? <laughs> Can I tell my backstory? Of course. Okay. Yeah, how <laughs> do you want to tell? So um, I think most people actually already kind of know, the ones who have hung out with me a while, I should say, because I know that you, know, you do have a lot more viewers that I don't. <laughs> um, anyway, so two years ago, I lost my house to a fire. And um, that was absolutely the lowest of woes. Um, I had actually gone through a divorce just five months before that. And so, you know, recovery time hadn't happened. Yeah. And um, it was just me and my daughter, tragedy struck, you know. And so I really quickly realized I had to have something to do to keep my brain, you know, functioning. And um, so my aunt actually said, you see, I think you need to stitch. And, you know, and I've always stitched monogamously before this happened. <laughs> um, and so, and of course I lost everything. So the first thing my sister did was, you know, she got on Amazon and she was sending me all kinds of stuff. She didn't know what she was buying. <laughs> um, so she sent me projects and I mean, dimensions are great. So I got some of those. She sent me all kinds of um, the off-brand flosses and I got some hoops and I don't remember, I got some crunchy material I can't remember what it was it was crunchy anyway so um I, I did go to the store and bought you know myself some stuff and so I was like okay I'm gonna have to do something you know to keep my mind busy because it was you know everything happening and so one day I was hanging out with me and Donna um who lived next door um 
those who have watched long enough know that I now live in my grandma's house. She gave me the house. It was an amazing ordeal. So, but um, I was watching some YouTube with Aunt Donna and she was like, have you heard of Floss Tooth? And I was like, no. And she was like, oh, Missy, you've got to watch so and so and so and so and so and so. So I just went in my phone and I started like listing people that she's telling me about. And so came over and, you know, went to YouTube and there were these people. So I subscribed. And after that, it just became like an obsession. Mm -hmm. So then one day she said, well, you can do that. No, she didn't. Grandma did. You can do that. And I was like, what would I show? Like, what would I do? What would I talk about? She's like, you don't have a problem talking. (laughs) I was like, thanks. Kind of do, but okay. It's so much easier to talk to the screen than it is people sometimes. Yeah. Um, and they don't laugh at me when I cry. Anyway, so um, I didn't do a lot of research, didn't do a lot of anything. I, I just, I was like, okay, what I call this thing. And that's where we went from there. So I just started up one day. I was like, hey, I have a plus two. That, that was number one. So. That's cool. Is that the question? Why did I start? Yeah. 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 So, I love was, I love the family support. Um, maybe you should get your aunt. I on. Yeah. Aunt Donna will not be on it. Uncle Gary has asked many times to come on. <laughs> I know for a fact. He just wants to make fun of things. He's very supportive of all of us stitching. Like he really is. He's like, why don't y'all get together and stitch? But he's just goofy. He's a kid at heart. And I mean, I adore him. So both of my uncles are amazing. That might be entertaining. Who knows? <laughs> You're right. You're very right. So, that's well, that that's great. That's great. I'm 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 trying to get my daughter because my daughter, my older daughter stitches, but she just she won't come on. So take pictures of you guys stitching together, take some videos, yeah. just slip it and in. And slip it in there. I do that once in a while with Aunt Donna. You've seen it. I do that yeah. once in a while. Yep. Yep. That's smart. That's a good way to do it. Um, so the second question is kind of how did you come up with your channel name? Well, my initial thought was I was yeah. going to do something like Teresa yeah. Little Stitcher does. Oops, is that me or you? I don't know what that was. Um, there was a noise. I was going to um, try to do like an actual videoing stitching situation. Okay. And I can't figure out that technology. So the name came from, you know, stitch with a male. Like I was going to actually actively stitch and chat. This is really hard to do. <laughs> you know, having something in front of you and talking. Mm-hmm. And so, and I'm not a techie person so I wasn't going to do the whole you know phone over the yep it wasn't working it's so funny so many people and I don't correct them because it is stitching with me but they'll say that the channel's name is stitching with Mel, whatever and I'm like you'll find me regardless yeah. but you know because I want people to do what I do with others and you know stitch along like when I'm watching somebody I'm stitching so yeah. I mean there's a couple of times that I'll turn you on to like go to sleep too but not very often usually I'm stitching <laughs> I do so that what- yep um it's hard actually unless you're doing like fill-in it's really hard to talk and stitch at least for me because I want to make sure I'm counting <laughs> so right? I don't know I don't know how hard. People- yeah I don't- counting is so hard yep um, so how did you learn to stitch and how long have you been stitching? My grandma taught me. I can still hear her. I went to her house, I think just about every weekend when I was a kid. I was 10. And I went in one day, she's, you know, cross stitching. And um, she did a lot of the, um, she accounted, she did a lot of the um, leisure arts, like the wagons with the quilts over them, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And um, her and a couple of my great aunts stitched and my aunt stitched. And um, so I said one day, like, how do you do that? And she's like, well, honey, it's easy. It's just counting. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, then show me. And she, she just came up with this whole beautiful, I could still see it. Oh my gosh. I don't know where she got the box from. My imagination says something like Walmart, maybe a Hobby Lobby type situation. I mean, mm-hmm. we're talking like early 90s. So I don't know, you know where it was. But um, a beautiful box with a handle on it. And it was like a quilted box. 
And um, the top layer, she had all the little, what we would call notions. Um, there was a tomato with pins in it Ooh. and um, a little package of needles. And I don't know if it was DMC or some off-brand thread, but she had threads in there. And then she had um, pressed like tea towels with fruit, you know, the, the old press on patterns yeah. um, for um, the, what do you call it? Is it the the uh, printed on to yeah. stitch? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So all the lines were blue, you know, when you yep. would fill it in. Yeah. And so, I mean, there was an apple and oranges and grapes and oh my gosh, it's so funny how I remember all that. So I'm thinking that was Christmas maybe, or maybe my birthday. I don't remember what the occasion was, but I got the box. And um, I was so excited. And so I just picked it up from there. Well, then one day I walked in, I was like, but how do you do the counting stuff? <laughs> she said, well, here's some material. Now you count. And I figured it out. Like I just took off with it. And so, and she said, she did tell me you start in the middle. So my grandma's just, her sense of humor is, it's funny. And so from then on, I just, I stitched and I didn't like stitch all the time when I was a teenager, yeah. but you know, when I was down, you know, there's things, you know, whatever I was bored or whatever mm -hmm. I would stitch. And then, um, you know, growing up, I grew up, you know, early and fast. I was 17 when I got married. And so I, I had that kit I'm thinking now, um, and I just kind of learned you know, more as I went along and there was long periods where I didn't stitch and then there was long periods where I did stitch. So, and now I'm just a mad stitcher. I'm literally surrounded by stuff right now. Like I'm thinking I need to clean up, but it's not going to happen. That, that's <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> no, I'm nobody's going to see it. Don't care. No, we, don't judge. we do not judge. <laughs> Oh, I love that. A lot of people that I've talked to actually had like their grandmothers teach them and, and that kind of stuff. Me and my sister are pretty much self-taught. So it's really neat to hear from mm -hmm. others who have, you know, family members that have taught them. And, mm -hmm. and I know that starting in the middle was something that everybody did, you know, now, but now I start back in the day, back in the day. <laughs> I start in the course. Crunchy data. Yeah. Crunchy data. Crunchy data. <laughs> which still comes in some kits <laughs> girl so. let me tell you I just got I don't know, you watched my video yeah I just got the whole big blessing of Ada and I am yeah. sticking happy <laughs> I, I said I love Ada stitchers <laughs> love it yeah that was a very generous box of of fabric that, that was awesome She's so, amazing. Yeah. But, that more, but yeah, it was great. Very giving. Um, so speaking of Ada, I guess, do you have a favorite project that you've stitched so far? My favorite pro, oh, I'm going to cry. Mm. That's okay. okay. If you cry, I'll cry. So <laughs> <laughs> you know how I am. Seeking Refuge. Can I tell the story? Yes. Okay. That's a beautiful Seeking piece. Seeking Refuge, Scarlet House. I, I wasn't sleeping there for a long time. Um, after, you know, I discovered everything. I woke up one morning on the couch. I'd fallen asleep watching Pain and Stuff. And I woke up, it's three o'clock in the morning. And they're going through, is it in October when they do all their planning for the next year? I think so. I think Somewhere around morning. that time frame. And so Steph is showing Seeking Refuge. Like she hadn't started it. Or maybe she put a couple of stitches in it or something. And when, when she read it, I'm not even awake yet. But when she read it, instantly burst into tears. And I was like, I have to have that. Pulled out my phone. I don't have my glasses on yet. I'm like, turn off my glasses, pull up my phone, ordered everything. And um, I got it in and I texted her and I sent her a message her. And I said, hey, Steph, um, I just ordered all this stuff. Do you want to stitch it? And um, you know what? It was in June when I did that. It was, it was like, Everything was scrolling. In oh. October, she found that, but it was in June when I was watching it. Because I said, I just ordered it. Do you want to start it in July, like July 1st? And she was like, sure, absolutely. Because steps up all hours of the night. And so anyways, the entire time I did that, like I would have emotional moments when I would just like be boohooing while I'm stitching it. Because the meaning is, so I'm not going to read it right now because it would be a mess. Um, but I changed one of the dogs, I'm looking at it now, it's on the wall. And I changed one of the dogs to look like my little puppy that um, perished in the fire. And then um, I made the year 
to be the year that we moved in here, which is the year of the fire. So I, I personalized it. And I, I told Tanya that whenever um, I finished it, you know, I tagged her and everything. And um, she said, you know, thanks for the beautiful, you know, da, 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 da. and I messaged her and told her all of the meanings. And she was like, oh my gosh, she was like, you change anything you need to. <laughs> so I started changed world since then. And that thing was booger. But anyway, so that's my favorite. Uh, I mean, I have lots of other pieces, but that's my favorite. <laughs> Well, yeah, because it has such sentimental meaning. And and that's what I love about cross stitching because there are pieces that you go through this journey on or they go on, like I have pieces that like the elk full coverage that I'm stitching for my husband, yes. that has memories attached to it of us, you know, staying at the beach and stitching on it. You know, just those pieces that have memories are the the best, the best. I, I feel that. like I don't from from moving forward I don't want to have any pieces that are just oh I just did them I want to have something attached to them you know what I mean yep so, yep I'm right you there know, with you yeah. yep I am sentimental that's why we were doing the a changed world um by the mm -hmm. scarlet house um Shannon Bromo and I were doing the the stitch along and I'm just at the last part where it's just filling in but what I did was I have every stitcher, like from pretty much local, because I haven't gone to any retreats, they've initialed it for me around the oh, side. They put their initials. So I'm going to take it to the retreat um, coming up at Acorns um, at the end of September. And I'm going to have stitchers put their initials in just because that piece, we had started that during a rough time, you know, with everything yeah. going on in the, in the world and, you know that sentimental is going to be that that meaning is going to be attached to it so you and I are the same with the, the like the sentimental pieces and stuff like that I love that so for sure, for sure. Yeah. so uh what do you enjoy most about stitching peace I, yeah. I really do like when even when if I'm around people whatever it's just like it draws me in like looking at the pattern, looking at the the fabric, everything just draws me in. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because so many people, because I, you know, I was teaching at work all the time when I was dispatching, mm -hmm. and the guys would come in, they would just sit there and watch me like forever, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I don't have the patience for that." I'm like, so peaceful. Yeah. And today the same thing happened. I I can stitch at lunch. I didn't tell you that. Um, so yeah. I'm stitching, you know, in, in my office at lunchtime and my boss walks in. She's like, what are you doing? And so I showed her Scarlet House, not Scarlet House, uh, Little Red House. And, um, she's like, oh my gosh, I don't have the patience for that. I could never do that. I was like, so relaxed. <laughs> oh, it drives me That's crazy when it. people say that they don't have the patience for it. I'm like, come oh. on now. I know. Yeah, it's so. You no, know, if I was to say, and you're military, so you appreciate this, but if I was to say, you know, shooting is relaxing or something, other people would say, huh, -uh. yeah, yeah. you really gotta have the patience to do it all. It's it's relaxing. So, you know. Yeah, I guess you put it into. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to look at it actually because I would always get annoyed because I would get it because I take my stitching with me everywhere and uh, there's yeah. always somebody that says I don't have the patience for that or I don't have the you know whatever for that and I would get upset because it's almost like I feel insulted but now with you you just put it into perspective nobody else has ever said anything to me <laughs> <laughs> put it into perspective so thank you um maybe i will feel less you enjoy. It, yeah. What you enjoy, you know. yeah i think that they should give it a chance if they actually were interested and then maybe they wouldn't say it but yeah <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i want everybody to stitch too I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> eh, yeah anybody i would just, just feel it it'll be fine <laughs> just try just put the needle in a little aggressive but okay no um so we're gonna get out of stitchy talk a little bit and learn a little bit more about you and so uh what's your favorite genre of book or movie um i was thinking about that books i think i just actually started reading again um i used to read all the time and i really like um probably my favorite would be like romantic inspirational that kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. i don't want anything like heavy and deep when we're young because 
especially now y'all my emotions are just so weird I said that I'm not getting older but you know I know some of that's that but you know just so much has happened that my brain is just full lit but um yeah so if I get emotionally attached to things then you know it's it's a sad day so yeah I, I, I've started reading again, especially at night, like to kind of relax and go to bed. And that's what I'm reading is, you know, kind of inspirational, maybe a little romance in there, but, you know, nothing really deep. So. Yeah. That's Movies. Cool. I like romantic comedies. I do not like anything slap humor, that kind of stuff. It's just, it annoys me. Um, I do like fantasy stuff. I think you do too. Yeah. Um, I like, like my kind of fantasy stuff, Lord of the Rings. Um, I've just gotten into Merlin. My aunt Donna and grandma are responsible for that. That's more of a TV series thing, but I call it a movie because it's on DVD. Um, I just got into Harry Potter over the last year. Never did that before, but all of my family loved it. So I, I had to do that. So yeah, yeah. Harry Potter is huge in the stitching community. <laughs> huge. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very. And the Lord of the Rings, though, that, that's also huge. It, that, I say this in a lot of interviews, but it's crazy how doing these interviews and talking to different people from, you know, all over the world, basically, I've had people outside the U.S., how much alike we are other than mm -hmm. stitching. It's Absolutely. crazy. It's, it Absolutely. blows my mind. It's so crazy. The creative mind, though. Yeah. It's, it's the brain that we're using. The, yeah. The, you just pull them together. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely shrunk in the world with this community. Yeah, yes, a hundred percent. So, uh, what fictional place would you most like to go to? Stars Hollow, Connecticut. Yeah, that's also a popular one. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would you not want to live in the perfect community where everybody knows everybody and right? you get to hang out, and, like you know, make fun of the town mayor or whatever the heck he is? <laughs> Yes. And Luke always has coffee. I mean, hello. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's it's the perfect place. My um my husband Where would you go? Hmm? Where would you go? I I was thinking probably Stars Hollow too. With there's only really, really been where people say uh Lord of the Rings, they go to why can't I think of it? The elf uh I can't think of it, but it's the the peaceful, tranquil place where the elves live. They, they oh, pick that, yeah. um, you know, they pick you know Harry Potter. Like everybody has the same thing. But I binge watched Stars Hollow. Like I binge watched you know all of that that oh, whole show, um, and became a little obsessed. Or I would go oh, to Central Perk for Friends, that that coffee shop kind of thing, just to hang out. One of those two um but i don't know one of those two but my husband grew up in a small town in michigan he grew up in midland michigan and you know it was like everybody knew everybody kind of thing and so when he retired from the marine corps i said that's where i want to raise our kids like that's where so we moved to midland we were there for a year but we couldn't find you know great jobs or anything but it was such an amazing community and it reminded me of stars hollow you know i mean it's bigger than that but just how all the neighbors know each other and you know it's just a small little town and maybe someday back to that but i mean where else can you go to a pancake house for like italian or chinese so right <laughs> <laughs> yes i actually should binge watch that again that was such a good show Let's do it. Oh, girl, I watch it all the time. Every time yeah. Erica comes home, it's on. Yeah, I might do that again. So if you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? Realistically, like in real life stuff, um, watch movies and cross stitch with my family. That, that would be a great day. <sighs> if I could just have my way in the world for a day, I would give anything to spend another day with my grandpa and my green bee and my nona i hear you and that's all we're gonna say about that <laughs> we're not gonna cry because I mean, <laughs> as soon as you said that i would be my grandpa yeah i practically lived at my grandparents and he had a tropical fish store that i helped out in and it was just yeah 
that would be that would be absolutely amazing yep 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 yeah i hear you um okay <laughs> well let's not get super sad <laughs> Do, we're keeping it up <laughs> yep do you happen to have any other hobbies besides cross stitch i sing to myself um no I mean, <laughs> yeah, to myself <laughs> work and um you know i've been all about for the last two years now two and a half years well really the last year and a half um you guys know um i've been more about self-care and so that's kind of become a hobby um i just got i was excited i just got my calendar for next year in and it's a wellness calendar from the happy planner no i'm not a rep but i do love the photos that is cool um, so yeah i uh well, um anyway it's just you know, taking care of myself, that's kind of become a hobby. You know, I do therapy and I've been, I haven't been to the gym as much because I keep getting hurt, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, watching what I'm eating, watching what I'm drinking, watching what I'm doing. And, you know, yeah. but as far as other crafts, no, I, I don't even know how to finish. Like Amy's always like telling me finishing done. I'm like, but I don't know how. You just got to no. do it. You just got to do it. But I have, I didn't bring it in here. I have a stack of things I need to finish. And I'm just like, can I just send that to somebody? Alexis wanted to finish something after StitchCon and I haven't sent it to her yet. And, you know, Angie's over on the West Coast. And I'm like, girl, I can send you some stuff. And it's just me. <laughs> I mean, there are finishers, but I mean, Annie, Annie in her videos, she's very inspiring as to just you know they don't have to be perfect they really don't my models for the designs that i do i finish them they're not perfect but you know girl yours are not the perfect so it's yes. just <laughs> just do it just slap it on some sticky board <laughs> you can do it my friend uh, my local stitchy friend uh melissa she's gonna love that i called her out but I went over to her house and she's got like a stack of beautifully stitched pieces that are just unfinished, like not FFO'd, but finished, you know, just this big stack. And I'm like, what are, <laughs> I have to get my stuff finished. She's not calling you out. She's loving you. I am. I am. She knows. <laughs> she gave me one of her stitched pieces to have that so that I could fully finish it and put it up on my wall for Halloween so that's perfect. very appreciative yes but um that you you gotta do it just you gotta do it at least once and try I do have did you finish up on me it's a fall finish oh I have that I just put fall out today and I stitched that too <laughs> it's great it's beautiful I it's that cute, yeah it's cute that's a freebie too I think from like a stitcher hood or something like that. Yeah, it's super cute. I love the squirrels. But yeah, okay. that's a great finish. <laughs> good. That was a good wheel pumpkin. And I just popped a little sunflower off and then re-glued it after I put everything there you go. That's all you got to do. See, it was easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, over well, we'll have, we can have a like a a zoom finish party there you go we can have a few people and then we can inspire each other and get to finish in how's that no pressure yeah. no pressure no we pressure. just talked about group texting <laughs> that is true okay two of us. Two of us. <laughs> okay all right um <laughs> I'm hijacking your interview sorry <laughs> no, it's fun it's fun so this next question is one of my favorites and it really gets people kind of thinking. And it's how would your friends describe you? I don't know. Um, so the people who know me would probably say pretty much what everybody else says, you know, the people who have met me, you know, through our floss community. Oh, she's so nice and sweet and whatever. Y'all just don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a very complex person. I'm not one who just, you know, like, hey, let's go hang out, whatever. See, I'm diverting. Like, I'm not even looking at you right now. <laughs> that, that's how that works. It's, this is a challenging question, but I like um, asking it. I just, I just want to take care of people. 
and you know I, I want to be helpful and that's that's what I try to do and portray yeah so. and I mean I said quite a few things in the opening you know to this interview that describe you and that comes through in all of your videos and such too just caring and compassionate and understanding that. what so yeah, we're virtual friends so there you go <laughs> yeah yep yeah. Yep, virtual friends. Hopefully someday in person friends, but virtual. absolutely. Yeah. We'll make it happen. But, but yeah, no, I I like asking this question because some people reach out to their friends, other people just kind of it makes you think like what other people, you know, kind of see see in you kind of thing. Uh -huh. I love it. So okay. Um, we're gonna get back into some stitchy talk. So how do you prefer to stitch? Do you use like a hoop, a cue snap, in hand, that kind of thing? So that kind of goes, I guess, with my mood. Um, I just discovered cue snaps, what, last year, maybe? Mm -hmm. I haven't been using them long at all. Maybe it was this year. And I love them. Me too. Um, absolutely love them. I was always a hoop, always. As a matter of fact, my mom saw me stitching a couple of weeks ago, I'd gone over, daddy asked me to come over and watch a movie. And so I'm hand stitching, you know, I'm holding it in my hand. She goes, push your hoop. And I was like, I don't use one all the time anymore. And she was like, what? You can stitch in your hands? And I was like, yeah. You know, I'm thinking she doesn't cross stitch. She cross stitched back in the nineties, but she doesn't anymore. And so I was like, mom, so many things have changed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, I discovered, oh, she's going to get me because I don't know the name of it. I, I can't see it either. My Aunt Donna has a table stand that holds the cue snaps on the edges. Okay. So it's like KM or something. And I love it. So I like to do that while I'm watching y'all on my TV. I have that on my little table in front of me. And that's for my bigger pieces, you know, obviously. I don't put my small pieces in it, but I love the cue snapping always. Um, and then I had never used a Lowry until a few weeks ago. I was over at Donna's and she had one. Mm -hmm. and I love. That's my next big investment. So I just got to quit buying kits and patterns so I can, you know, save up. Yep. For it. Yep. It's a good chunk. That's, that's something. I mean, we've already priced it and looked at it. And that's, yeah, that's the next big thing. But um, as far as favorite, I guess I'm cute now. Yeah. I like, do you, so with your cue snap, because everybody, when I post pictures on Instagram and most of the time it's still in the cue snap and people will, why are you stitching it like that? Cause I stitch in the well so that the back is flush so that I can get my needle through the back. Mm -hmm. Do you stitch like that? Or do you stitch with a fabric on the top? I will do um, either one. It kind of depends on how much overflow fabric I'm going to yeah. have. Because if I have a lot, I would rather stitch in the well so that I have all the fabric on top and it's not, yep. you know, I'm not wrapping my hand or at it. Very cool. Uh, do you have like a preferred type of fabric that you tend to lean towards more fabric and, and count or just anything? Historically, it's been Ada. I still like Ada. I love Ada. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned to use Even Weave over the last two years and I really like it. Um, and, and then I've been ordering more, you know, just as things come along. Um, and so I'm learning linens and I like some of them, some of them I do not. <laughs> um, the one that I'm doing Quaker Christmas on is so flimsy Yeah. to have it in a tight, tight, um, either cue snap or hoop. Yeah. Um, I typically use a hoop for it because I have to have it tight. Um, but I like the way that it looks. So but my go-to is probably some count of Ada. Yeah, mine is too. I, I'm i an Ada stitcher through and through. I like my 18 and my 20, yeah. but I started stitching on linen <laughs> and I'm not a big fan, but I stitched the samplers on them because of the over one and the specialty stitches. It's a little bit more difficult with Ada. So yeah, I love my Ada. I have <laughs> a card, so acorns and threads. Um, uh, Jolyn, she's the finisher for Acorns and Threads, and she had cards made because she's an Ada stitcher. 
and it's an actual like business card that says like Ada Gangsta on it, an official member oh, of Ada Gangsta. Oh, and I still have that in my wallet and it's been years. Miracle. I love it. I love it. Ada Gangsta's. Um, so do you have a favorite place that you've traveled and did you bring any stitching along when you went? I don't travel a lot anymore. Um, when we were kids, um, we went to all kinds of places. I mean, Branson, um, we went to, to, um, Texas. Some, my granddad lived in Texas. So I don't remember those trips specifically, but you know, as a teenager, we went to Texas a couple of times. Um, Branson's probably my favorite place to go. Now this summer, this past summer, I went on two trips by myself, you know, two retreats. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to the Stitch Etc. retreat, and then I went to, my phone is blowing up, it's that group text, um, Stitch Etc. <laughs> retreat, and um, Stitch Klein, and I had a blast at both places. I feel like Stitch Etc., the, the location and the hotel and everything, it was just the most relaxing, like, I've been as an adult, <laughs> and of course, I stitched the entire time, so nice. that was, that was amazing, but, um, I mean, historically, I, I just haven't taken stitching just because, you know, I wasn't doing as much as I am now. So I'm a homebody, though. Like, yeah, I like to be at home. So, yeah, I mean, I go to see my daughter in Texas. I take stitching with me. Nice. You know, I'm usually stitching late, but I've only been there a couple of times. So she usually comes to me. Because <laughs> you're a homebody. I get it. <laughs> yeah. I think Work I'm in home stitch. Yeah, I'm the same way. I my first retreat like is coming up at the end of this month and I'm like I'm having a little bit of anxiety because I've not really been away from home. I like to be home with my family. So I'm like having this anxiety. I'm excited, but I also I challenge you to have a good time. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm I mean, I'm sure I'll have a good time. It's just the nighttime is when I'll probably be the worst cuz I just, you know, just I'm the same. I just want to be home, you know. So that's when I stitched to my hardest, um, was it not? Because I didn't want to feel different. So, and I stitch it not here. Yeah. So I didn't okay. want to feel different. So, you know, everything's over. You're going to the hotel room. You're doing all the things. And I would pull out my stitching. I would stitch like a full until like two in the morning. And then I'd go to bed and then get up and do everything. I might try that because I do stitch at night until we go to bed. So, yeah, yeah I might try that. We'll see. We'll see. I, I I have two roommates and one they're friends. Oh, of mine, so yeah. um, I'm sure if I'm a blubbering mess, they'll take care of me. So. Thank you. Like, come in, let me know who it is and we'll take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you sign, did you sign up for StitchCon for next year? Did you get on the wait list? No, I did not. Um, I put out an announcement. I'm sorry. I put okay. out an announcement a few weeks ago with everything that was happening with work I was like look 2023 I'm laying low y'all I'm, oh, okay. um, I'm, I'm gonna definitely cheer you on I'm gonna follow all the things oh that's bummer but, yeah I, I just felt like 2023 was probably gonna be a year of growth and um hopefully a lot of stitching so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on retreats and also with my, my schedule is different like it's yeah. all different so, yeah. yeah I get it yeah it's not cheap to go to retreats especially with the room the retreat costs flights yeah I'm learning I, was, yeah. I don't know how people I wrote to both of them and I do not regret any of it I yeah. mean I had great experiences from both of them so you know I, I'm I'm not one to like complain and stuff but I really I mean you know I found the good in everything and there was great memories made but yeah, I was like 2023 20, with everything happening with all the change, which the changes happened five months before I was expecting them. But with all the changes, I was like, no, I'm not going to try to put something else on myself. Well, uh, that's smart that you made that decision and, you know, you put you first, which is what should happen. So, Absolutely. yeah. So what can you not do without for your stitching? Like your favorite go-to must-have. <laughs> my magnifiers did you see that i broke mine a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. i instantly got on amazon i was like no i gotta have those tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> next day shipping <laughs> I have even, i've gotten so bad that i even rely on them for my ada and i don't need them 
but it just makes things easier. So yeah. I use 2.75s and then my glasses are, what do you call it? Progressive. I have a slot a focal. Yeah, they're progressives. Yeah. So, you know, using it down here. Minor, yeah, minor prog- or minor bifocals, but yeah. Yeah. I I need them for stitching for sure. I have, I have yeah. to have my magnifiers. Somebody is smartly getting their um their um whatever you call an eye doctor to put whatever their strength is for magnifiers into their glasses so that they have bought eyeglasses with that strength in them. Oh so it's a regular prescription plus whatever you need to cross stitch. Hmm. I might have to, uh, yeah, because I mean, these are fine until I get onto the linen and then I have to have my light with the magnifier and my glasses. So I will keep that. Angie did that. Watch her last video. I just thought about that. Watch her last video. She explains what she did. She actually took a project with her (laughs) and said, give give me the prescription for what I need to cross stitch. I never even thought of that. That's smart. Oh, I'm going to definitely. Okay. <laughs> um, so how do you decide on what you're going to work on next for your projects? You know, I tried so hard this year to be a scheduler. Yeah. It's not worth the hassle. <laughs> it's not. I mean, I'm even still telling myself, I did this last week. I was like, Fridays are Fancy Lady Friday. So Sunday, let's catch up on Fancy Ladies. <laughs> I said to myself, September is, um, what is it? Sampler September. So I really want to work on my Celtic spring. <laughs> nope. It's whatever hits me, just whatever I'm in the mood for. Yeah. Last night, I, I worked on different projects and I posted a couple of them. And I literally at one point put a project down and said, I'm done with you. What am I going to stitch? And I just sat here for a minute and I had a little pity party. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to stitch. I was like, Change the World sounds good. I haven't touched Change the World in like three weeks. And I was like, I need to touch Change the World. I saw your post. I don't why I'm off one stitch. So I got to find it. But that's the word. I can't, I can't tell myself what to do. I tried to start with Co. Pam and I discussed it. Steph's not going to look. <laughs> I, I just can't stick with anything yeah. it's just whatever gets yet yeah I'm the same way I try to do like the 13th they do the <clears throat> dark 13 stitching totally forgot oh, it's on my calendar I never even think about it totally <laughs> forgot I'm just like Christmas on the 25th nah that don't happen either nope <laughs> yep I think a lot of stitchers I it, from the people that I've talked to throughout these interviews not very many are planners most of them are whatever calls to them is is what they're going to work on so because yeah. you have to you have to be in the mood I yeah mean, it's, oh, not, yeah. it's like i said you're you're pouring yourself into your project so if yep. you're not in that mood to do that then it's not going to mean nothing yep that is oh, i remember when i grudgingly did that project how fun was that <laughs> <laughs> right i don't think any but any stitcher has like done that where they're like i have to stitch it unless it's a gift or something um you know, you just put it down and work on something else. So, yeah. So um, before we get to the last question, was there anything that you wanted to share that people didn't know about you? I thought about that. I called Erica about that. I was like, what don't people know about me? I mean, I have told y'all about the fact that I'm attracted to spiders, which is unfortunate. And y'all know about my history. (laughs) I don't know. I tell people I'm allergic to onions because they give me a headache but I really can't think of any I really don't know well and see that that just means that you're an open book and you're pretty straightforward with everybody and you know I feel like with I've just kind of hijacked your interview tonight for one thing but um I feel like with floss two number one everybody's literally strangers and you know you you are kind of an open book yeah you share things that tragically we don't share with the people that you know are around us and you know spend time with this um I mean I sometimes I get insulted that my parents don't watch my floss tube and I'm like I mean I did kind of talk about them last week so I probably don't want to watch it you know so I mean it's just you know when when you're sharing and you're open 
and you're caring about other people, you know, that's why this community is so fantastic. Mm -hmm. You're not going to judge me because you literally don't know, you know, me, but you know, we've gotten to know each other because we're pretty open. Yep. That's I, and there, there are some channels like ours that were open and, you know, we tell people about our, you know, time away between, between floss tubes. And then there are other channels that are straight to the point and just show stitching. And, you know, there's, there's people out there, one or the other. So, you know, to each their own. Right. Yeah. yeah. I like to be open because what I like, I think is is the comments are more personable they like the people will will just say you know i'm sorry you're not feeling well i'm also going through it and then they open up i get messages all the time from you know because i went through that horrible stage of covid for months still dealing with it but i'm getting messages from people because i've been so open about it you know thanking me and saying you know i went through this and you know it it's just, it's amazing. If you open yourself up, it brings more people in to you. It, it, I love it. I love that. I just love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I get the same kind of thing. And, you know, there, there's times when I talk more about my mental health, you know, situations, struggles, mm-hmm. you know, advancements, everything. And I've gotten some people who've reached out and said, you know certain things you know yeah. whether they need to support or whether they're just there to support me and I'm like this is what this community is about yep yeah I would you know it out out people outside our community they just can't see it and I try to tell people about it I just I wish that I could just bring more people into the stitching community because it's it's uh, for the most part it is a very, you know, good, there, are, there's some drama out there and stuff, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's a, it's a drama. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's an amazing community. And I just wish that I could, I could just bring in people that are either struggling. And then again, sometimes I'm just stingy. I'm like, I don't want my outside world to be inside. This yeah. World. Yeah. That too. <laughs> but you know, my aunts and my grandma really, they watch my shows, you know, shows plus two, whatever you want to call it. Um, regularly and every once in a while you know they'll text and commentate to myself but I'm just like nobody else you know lives here and understands yeah. what's happening so it makes yeah. it good yeah I love that okay well we're down to the last question all right this is my other favorite question okay it is what is the best thing that has happened to you within the past couple of years stitching 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 have i mentioned that my therapist loves to stitch oh yeah because it helps <laughs> um you know everything's happened in two years and literally my timeline in life goes from before fire after fire and that's just that's the way that things are in my healing process and you know and my therapist and i have talked about that and he's like you're cool you know that's what how we're going to work on things but stitching in the last two years has it's kept me focused it's kept me driven you know I have a reason to get up sometimes when I don't feel like getting up because I have a floss to report on Monday or Tuesday you need <laughs> contact <laughs> yep <laughs> more times I have said that yeah. yeah and there are times when I'm recording on Tuesday and I'm like it's legit because on Sunday night I was like scrambling to get content <laughs> we've all been there, we've all been there. Like, oh. <laughs> but I mean it's grounded me you know when my mind can go a million places and they cannot be good places mm-hmm. and stitching brings me back to focus whether I'm watching a bus tuber or I'm watching a movie sometimes I have to watch a movie because I don't need to focus on y'all because I'm, I'm thinking too much you know I need to have something that'll take me away um yeah stitching in this community has been the best thing in the last two years and the support of my family because you know my family is the reason that I got stitching yeah, so yeah it, it's wow. true when I tell people that stitching is therapeutic because it really is it it your there are three studies being done right now inside our community because people have realized, wait a minute, I'm into something more than just a craft. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who they are, 
there's actually one who's doing a questionnaire. Oh. But they're actually doing graduate work on what the influence of stitching is on the brain. That's amazing. That would so, be something cool to, to follow up on. There are studies already. I mean, I Googled it. There's, there's good studies showing what the effect of it on the brain is. It, it definitely helps prevent, prevent my brain just went away, <laughs> dementia, um, because it keeps whatever happens when your brain starts to die, it keeps that active. Yeah, because we're, we're keeping our brains active that way. That makes sense. I, I'm sure that goes for crafters in general, like crochet oh, yeah. and, and knitters and stuff that are just keeping their, that's, that's amazing. Right. More people should craft. <laughs> Absolutely. The world, the world would be a better place if more people crafted. I'm just right. saying. <laughs> Look how happy we are. Right. <laughs> right. So. In the midst of a huge worldwide pandemic, our community came together and grew mad. Yes. So. Yep. And that's why I asked this question within yeah. the past couple of years because that's what we went through is that pandemic I was thinking about that I just thought there was time <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I love asking this question just because it ends on a positive note because it makes you think even though the past couple of years have been horrible uh there's still yeah. positive things that come out of it so yeah. yeah yeah so thank you so much for taking time out of your evening I know you work today and for being so understanding and messaging me on September 11th saying, girl, we do not need to do this interview today because you knew I was not in the right mental state for that. I did not even think about it when we scheduled that. I was like, oh I no, think, we are not yeah. doing this on 11th. We will both be involved. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of it either. Um, and I thought, you know, I was going to be okay. And then that fiasco happened with the scrapbook. And, you know, I was just like, no, I'm so glad you messaged me. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so thank you so much for just being so like, I don't even know the word, but just so understanding. Um, and that we finally got this done. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I appreciate you, Becca. You're such a star in everything you do. You're no. so awesome. No. So no. Awesome. I love doing these like, interviews. Like this is amazing. Man. Just mm -hmm. I, I just enjoy watching all your interviews. <laughs> I, I hope people enjoy the interviews. It, it seems like they do. It's just something where you yeah. don't even have to look up. You can just listen to, you know, people talking and, and stitch and just feel like you're, you have friends just chit chatting over oh, coffee, you know? Right? Yeah. I've been drinking frozen coffee. They're not frozen, but cold coffee. That's why I'm in this. So. I got my <laughs> tea from my husband bought me this mug. <laughs> Aw, I just snuggle season. Snuggle season started. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, we're, we're going to say bye to everybody on Floss 2. Bye.